So apparently fire suppression leads to less frequent but large and intense fires, whereas a lack of fire suppression is going to lead to more frequent but smaller, slower moving, less intense fires. That's what was being talked about in the final pages of chapter two in Fire in California's Ecosystems. Finally made my way through chapter two. And it does this deep dive into what you could almost call a fire experiment where they look at the landscapes in Southern California versus Baja California. So you can almost, I'll try to paint a picture in your mind. Imagine Southern California, and we're talking about the chaparral here, and you have very large burn scars. So large fires, and then they're spaced out in time by maybe five to 10 years. So infrequent large fires. And then you have the international border and then right when you cross that and go into Baja, California, you go from what was those very large burn scars to very tiny burn scars that are not very spaced out in time. So lots and lots of fires, almost looks like speckles or something. So it'd almost be like pepperoni in Southern California. And if you just poured out a bunch of sprinkles in Baja, California. Now the reasoning for this is actually makes pretty good sense. So in Southern California, that's where we'd have fire suppression. In Baja, California, think no fire suppression. So let's go into Southern California first. So throughout the fire season, so summer into fall, you're going to have a certain number of days where you have extreme fire behavior or extreme fire weather. That's when it's going to be the hottest, the driest, the windiest. And you're going to have some days that are on the other end of the spectrum that are very moist. So during those very moist days, there's going to be no fire activity, whether you suppress it or not. Fires just aren't going to start because there's so much moisture in the air and into your fine fuels. And then there's going to be that period in between. Now that's going to be almost on a normal distribution. So by definition of the word normal, most days are going to be normal fire weather conditions, not extreme on either end of the spectrum. Now, during those normal days in Southern California, we'll have fire start for any number of reasons. You might have an ignition, but because it's not extremely hot, extremely dry, extremely windy, we're able to get maybe a chopper on it, get a, get a crew on it, and they're able to just put it out immediately. So we have very few fires in those normal conditions. But then what happens is because we have so few fires, the fuel that would have burnt out with those fires is allowed to continue to accumulate. And then what happens is you have those days that are very hot, very dry, very windy. Sometimes it only takes one of those factors, usually dry or windy. Those seem to be the most important because High temperatures really just impact your relative humidity, how dry it is, impacts how dry your fuels are. And then obviously that's going to impact how easy it is for a fire to start and then how easy it is for that fire to spread. So you're eventually going to have maybe a few days per year where you're in that extreme fire weather category. So your ignition starts, they try to suppress it, but it just blows up out of control that fire is now going to have the ability to grow a lot larger because of all the fires that were suppressed in the past. The reason for that is because a fire needs fuel to continue to move forward. So if that fuel has been able to accumulate and it's continuous and the fire weather conditions are such that it's so extreme out there that no amount of fire suppression is going to stop this thing, then the fire just takes off and it turns into a large fire. However, that's also going to be infrequent where that's going to happen because you might only have a few of those days per year where you have the extreme fire weather conditions. And then it's almost just unlucky if you get an ignition during one of those days at the right time and in the right place. So in Southern California, we have the big burn scars because the fuels accumulate and then you finally have a fire when it's extreme fire weather conditions, there's an abundance of fuels, and then it just turns into a large blaze that overwhelms suppression efforts. So now let's cross that international boundary and let's go, in, go down into Baja, California. So in Baja, California, 
you're still not going to get fires when it's very moist out. But your fires, or the amount of burned area that you have, is actually going to follow a much more normal distribution, almost like your fire climate. Now the reason for that is, well, if you have lots of fires popping up, there's and they're able to just continue to burn, whether it's in normal conditions or ex in extreme conditions, then just by matter of the fact that more a larger amount of time is going to be in those normal conditions, you're going to have more burned area during those normal conditions, just because that takes up more of your time. Now, it is interesting, though, that it doesn't also spike up when it gets extremely dry, extremely hot, or extremely windy out there. Now the reason for that is because the smaller fires have already cleared out a lot of the fuels. So the reason we have all the little tiny fires in Baja, California, is because you'll have a fire that starts in normal conditions. It's not going to go, it's not gonna to be too extreme. It's gonna move around along the ground, slow burning. It might even burn for the entire fire season. It could burn for months at a time just slowly creeping forward. Maybe it almost stops at one point when you get a little more moisture out there and then it starts to pick back up. But it's not going to grow that large because this is how the ecosystem has been for a very large amount of time. And eventually it's going to bump into where there was maybe a fire last year. Not a lot of the fuels have grown back and then it stops in its tracks. Then you might be thinking, okay, but when it's extremely hot out, extremely drought, extremely windy out, then you're still going to have a fire that just takes off and it turns into a large fire. Except you're not going to have the fuel in place because it was already burned out. So maybe it is one of those extremely dry days. A fire starts, it starts to go, but it burns its tiny little patch and then there's nothing left to burn because the areas around it burned last year or maybe even earlier in the season. And this is something that I've even seen as a wildfire forecaster. I'll be forecasting a fire and it'll be moving maybe miles a day north. And then I turn on fire history and I see that there is a burn scar from two years ago just to the north of the fire. Most of the time, that fire will just stop in its tracks as soon as it gets to the previous burn scar. And it almost forms like a perfect little puzzle piece. So where there's a lack of fuels due to fire in the past, you're not going to have continued fire today. So thought that was pretty interesting. Wrapping up the final section of chapter two, the basic summary there again is that in Southern California, we have fire suppression. So fuels are able to accumulate and then you have fires in the most extreme days that turn into large blazes because they just overwhelm fire suppression efforts. Whereas in Baja, California, where there's not suppression, you're going to have lots of fires popping up throughout the entire fire season. And then they're going to be slow moving and you're actually going to have less burned area during the very extreme days because, well, that's just, there's not enough fuel to burn and you're only going to have a few extreme days per year. So hopefully that made sense. I thought it was a pretty interesting section. If you want to learn more, I'm done with chapter two, but I've got a long ways to go to get through the rest of this book. So stay tuned for more updates and I'll continue to learn more about wildfire and try to communicate what I learn. And thanks for watching.